Luke, it's great to have you here uh, this morning. Um, you know, I'm Todd Lyons. I'm the vice president of the Naval Postgraduate School Foundation and Alumni Association. And it was an absolute pleasure to see uh, a number of our MPS uh, graduates uh, getting chosen for the astronaut program. Uh, how do you feel right now? Uh, amazing, Todd. I appreciate you guys having me. Uh, could, I honestly never thought it would happen, if I'm being honest, but uh, always worth hoping and trying to be competitive for a position like this. So just completely elated at this point. So that's a great uh, start to the conversation. When did you really imagine yourself on this journey? You know, the astronaut position, the NASA astronaut position has always appealed to me. I grew up in Central Florida. I watched shuttle launches. I dreamed of flying the shuttle uh, and just haven't seen that. And really focusing on, on science and math and technology has been a big interest of mine. So it puts together all the components almost in one, uh, especially with leveraging the military and aviation background. It really just all com comes to there, culminates nicely. Absolutely. And, you know, as you came in, you were um, enlisted initially, which I love, and you were that, you know, navigator. Um, how, how did you get into the Marine Corps? Well, uh, I was got a military background in the family, to be honest. My dad was a Marine. My brother's a Marine. So that military appeal has always been there. You're kind of a little bit of a patriotic family. Uh, but when I saw that there was an avenue potentially coming through the Marine Corps, uh, getting into aviation, and then even getting the follow-on education opportunities, uh, it just really took off. No, oh, that's outstanding. And I, I love that fact in many ways because <clears> – <throat> part of the transition that we're kind of seeing at MPS and we're really pushing for is this increase in the ability to bring both enlisted as, that are currently enlisted, but also some of those prior enlisted through the uh, program. Um, you know, when you were in Afghanistan, were you imagining coming and being able to, to be an astronaut, you know, in that follow-on uh, career? Yeah, definitely not. I, I, I was, it's always in the back of your mind, I think, at least for me, it is. It's people who know me well know this is what I always wanted to do, but I kind of had, I kept it pretty quiet. I'm a reserved person in a lot of ways, but uh, being in Afghanistan and, and leveraging those experiences and just building on, on uh, all these opportunities couldn't, I mean, NPS has been great as well. Um, you guys got a, a diverse syllabus and you had a partnership with Navy test pilot school, which is what I took advantage of. So can't be really appreciative of that setup there. As you're thinking about it, you know, um, how did you get to MPS? Was that part of the uh, board process or was this before the board process where you actually made the choice to come into MPS? Yeah, I had a few different track options. I actually got selected for postgraduate uh, by the Marine Corps, but they quickly changed that to a uh, expeditionary warfare school option on the Marine side. So that that got switched up kind of last minute. Um, the next avenue I found was when I was going through TPS, they had some uh, co-op opportunities there. Uh, so once we completed that syllabus and I got into the test squadron, the first thing I did was apply to the program. Outstanding. And so, you know, what was your experience like here at the Naval Postgraduate School? It was awesome. It was largely a distance learning event, but you know, it's 2020 or 2021. So even a few years back as I'm doing these things, uh, we had the technology to be able to really make it uh, meaningful. So I actually found it probably in a lot of ways more advantageous because I could reference material. It was recorded, like all these things that I didn't have going through, uh, uh, you know, bachelor's degree style programs and things like that. So I, I really, uh, the NPS environment, I was able to leverage a lot more learning opportunities there. You're a pioneer in so many ways because that idea of bringing the learning to the student rather than having the student have to come and pursue the learning, I think that's actually a broader theme in naval education that we're uh, kind of seeing roll out. Uh, and you, uh, again, being a pioneer in doing that, was there a professor that you really established a relationship with uh, early on or a couple of them that uh, you would want to mention? Yeah, you know, I think uh, I can't remember his first name, so I apologize, but Brophy was kind of our, our master's degree kind of cohort. 
chair there and he did a great job bringing it all together. Um, I was appreciative of all the instructors. We, they had such a diverse background. Um, if I could thank them all individually, I, I really would, would take that opportunity. But um, he did a great job, Rufi did, of bringing us all together and, and uh, focusing the education. And the culminating project for a missile design project, I was re really pleased with uh, that product. Was that a capstone project for you, um, you know, vice a thesis? Can you tell us more yeah. about that? Yeah, the capstone project. So we were leveraging, I think, what we call an RFA uh, request for action, if I got it right, uh, from the Navy or DOD side to kind of design a surface-based missile system uh, for intercepting a threat. So um, able to take some of the strength of material and design considerations, the propulsion aspects, uh, guidance, navigation, and controls, and merge all of those things. Uh, it's funny, I still periodically review uh, that thesis or that uh, capstone we did and I, there's a ton of takeaways it's a great building block for even the space and, and nasa mission absolutely and you know multidisciplinary collaboration leveraging technology to do it in a distance format uh and then really the ability to deliver something that the navy needs uh you know your story really encapsulates the naval postgraduate school experience in, in a powerful way looking forward um, what is your aspiration uh, as an astronaut? You know, I think it's pretty simple, I guess. It's just to make an impact. I think NASA offers us a vehicle to really change the course of humanity, which sounds pretty profound. But uh, to have that kind of opportunity, it's saying it's a once in a lifetime opportunity seems like a real understatement. But uh, I just hope to make some sort of impact and it can be you know, for the STEM field or for discovery and exploration, whatever. But I'm honestly, if I'm being honest, I'm really looking forward to the moon missions and I'm hopeful that that's the track I, I get selected on once training is over. Well, I think the last uh, person that stepped foot on the moon was a Naval Postgraduate School graduate. So we hope that uh, the next one that uh, steps foot on the moon is also a Naval Postgraduate School graduate uh, as well. Uh, have you talked to your family and your kids about uh, the potential for you to go to Mars? Uh, so I'm really focusing on, on being able to help bridge that NASA mission for these, uh, you know, larger solar system exploration events. So uh, that's exciting to us. And uh, we'll keep the uh, Mars stuff on the table, but I, I don't think it's in the cards for me. What's amazing is you have this opportunity to both make a difference, uh, you know, outside the Earth's atmosphere, but uh, I also like the fact that you're really trying to make an impact uh, here on Earth as well uh, through your focus on STEM education. Um, you know, as you look at what those opportunities are for you, um, is there a particular area that you think you would like to make a difference in? Yeah, I, I think uh, one of the challenges I had growing up as a child was trying to understand um, a pathway to get to where I wanted to go. And I know that sounds kind of vague or generalized, but you look at something, an end goal, and trying to navigate that can seem a little bit overwhelming. So I, I think just basic mentoring for, for kids and, and giving them some direction and insight that you don't need to track down a definitive path. You could, you've got all kinds of options that'll get you to your goal. And it's just uh, focus, you know, discipline, determination, all these things that will come together to get you there. I think that uh, as we are looking forward, I have three girls and my aspiration for them is that they have those opportunities in the future as well. Have you gotten to meet the other members of your cohort for the astronaut candidate class? You know, relatively recently, yes. So last few days, we've really been getting together and um, what a great energy in the bunch. Uh, we have so many diverse perspectives, yet we have such a similar similar goal and it just you know melds together really nicely, a good blend. But uh, they're equally excited and, and we're just awaiting training. We can't wait for training to start in, in January so we can get going. That's outstanding. Luke, again, thank you so much uh, for taking the time. This has been a great conversation. Um, any last words for the students here that are at uh, Naval Postgraduate School? Uh, I just say, if, if you want something, go get it. And you have all the tools you need uh, at your fingertips if you're an NPS student. So let's make it happen.